Yo, what's up everybody? It's Cody Piper. We're back with another After Effects tutorial today. We're going to be using the Content Aware Fill tool to completely remove someone from our video. Now, I've done a tutorial just like this in the past where I show you what to do when the tool doesn't work. And you can go ahead and click on the link in the top right corner if you want to check that out. But today's video is going to be even better because I've learned a new method inside of After Effects that gives you much cleaner and more accurate results. So I'm really pumped to show you guys this. So let's jump right in. So I want to give a quick shout out to one of my subscribers, Catherine Parsons. We're actually going to be fixing her footage today. She's the director of a documentary film called Fire Cats, and it's a story about the cats who actually survived the wildfires that happened in California. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to learn more about that project or share it around or support it if you can. So the goal today is going to be removing this person that's walking on the right and replace them with a perfectly clean background so it looks like nothing has changed. And so the hardest part about this is that the camera is actually pulling back and as it moves back your perspective is changing so now we're working in 3D space rather than 2D space. After Effects handles 2D very well when it comes to content aware but in 3D space it can definitely warp things and make things look really bad. So here's the overview. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna mask out both people. So we have a completely clean plate to work with. Next, we're gonna create multiple reference frames. That way After Effects has a lot of information to work with. Third, we're gonna generate the content aware fill. And because we've given After Effects so many reference frames, it should generate a really clean fill layer. Fourth, we're gonna use our original video and composite our person that we wanna keep in the frame back over top of our fill layer. Lastly, we'll do any manual corrections that might be needed. So let's get started by creating a mask around the object or person that you're trying to remove. Uh, set your mask to none so it's easier to see as you're creating it. And also press the stopwatch where it says mask path or else it won't record any of the keyframes that you create. Now go through your entire timeline. Make sure that the mask is covering this subject throughout the whole thing. And the only thing you have left is the background that you want to keep. All right, now that our mask is completed, what we're gonna do is start to find the places where we wanna add our reference frames. So you're basically telling After Effects what actually should be behind the person or object that you're removing. So the more reference frames that you give, the more accurate your fill layer is gonna come out. So the best way I've found to do this is as you create your reference frame, that's gonna automatically open it up in Photoshop. So go back to After Effects, move your playhead forward about a second, and then you're gonna to wanna to save your frame as a Photoshop file. And then go back into After Effects, move your playhead back about a second before the reference frame, and then save another Photoshop file. So once you jump back over to Photoshop, so you wanna to go to Finder and locate the extra frames that you rendered out of After Effects and import those into Photoshop. So then turn one of those off so you only have one showing and go ahead and set your blend mode, which is right above your layers, to difference. Basically, it takes the difference between the layers. So if there's no difference between the layer at all, your screen's gonna be completely black. But any places that it's different, it's gonna show through to this kind of multiplied look. So as that black starts to show or it gets close to black, we know that we're getting close to lining up this layer to where it needs to be. So as you import each new layer, you want to focus on one particular spot. So for example, right here, I'm focusing right to the right of his torso. And so the process I'm doing is first, I'm moving the layer around just using the move tool. And so I see the most black start to appear right in that area that I'm focusing on. Then once I find that, I use the transform tool, which is command T. I set my anchor point right on the exact spot I'm focusing on. To set your anchor point, just hold option and click. And once you hold option and click there, your anchor point is now gonna be there. If you go up to the top and you see where your height and the width are, you can use those to transform your image. And that's also gonna transform using your anchor points location. Another benefit to doing this is you don't have to zoom all the way out and find the little transform tools that are on the outside of your image. You can stay zoomed in. And if you click inside the box where it says the height and the width, you can just press up and down arrow keys and that will transform your image. So you can stay zoomed in and see all the detail as you're transforming your image. You probably want to uncheck this little chain icon so that you can manipulate the height and the width separately. As I transform my image, I'm again, I'm just watching for that black until you can start to see even a black line appear in the image as you're moving it and it lets you know if you're getting closer or further away. So once you've got the most black appearing right on this spot that you're focusing on, you know you're good to finish that transform there and start masking. 
So hold option and click on the layer mask icon down at the bottom. And that's gonna give you an inverted layer mask onto your layer. And so now here's the fun part. So now you just get to mask that clean, empty background layer over top of your layer that you're trying to remove. So again, you wanna do this in segments. So whatever spot you focus on, like I was focusing here on the right of his torso. So now I'm only removing that little part. And I'm looking for things in the background like this ladder and this little log and make sure that those line up. This is one of those things that you're gonna to have to do some trial and error and figure out what works and figure out what looks best, but definitely take it in pieces. Don't do it all at once. So once you have one piece done, you're gonna duplicate that layer and do the whole process over again as you move to his shoulders, as you move to his head and his feet and his shadow. Now luckily it won't take you as long as that first transform because you're already gonna be pretty close. It's just gonna be a matter of shifting up and down, maybe changing the height and width a little bit but each piece needs to have a new layer. So at the end of this, you're gonna end up with five or six layers on average just to remove the one person. All right, now that you've completely removed your subject or object, the last thing you wanna do is group all the layers that you used to remove them and create an inverted layer mask. And so basically just hides everything you did. And then you wanna carefully use your brush to create a really, really tight mask around the person that you're removing. And so what this does is this gives you only the pixels that you need to remove the person and not anything extra. So any of that extra stuff that's not technically the background layer is gonna mess up the content aware fill. So it's pretty important to be as accurate as you possibly can on all of your reference frames. And just to give you a visual, I'll turn off the layer for a second so you can see what we just removed and you'll see the background change ever so slightly. And you see here at the top how this white piece of the background moved down here. So then After Effects would think that those two white pieces are true and they should be left in. But since we just did that extra mask, that cleaned that up. So now we just have that one, which is what is truly there. So After Effects knows, okay, I need not add anything new. And so we're gonna do the same thing to the other person. Remove them completely, add a layer mask just to clean it up. And now we're left with a completely clean frame. So what we'll do is we'll just Command S, save that reference frame as the same name that it created in the same location that After Effects created it in. And now here's the fun part. We'll go back to After Effects and we'll create a new reference frame about every second. This took me a long time. <sighs> okay, so we're gonna go back to our original layer where we have our mask of both of our people and we're gonna set that mask now to subtract. So the content aware of fill needs to have the mask set to subtract so it knows what it needs to fill in. Now that we've got all our reference frames there in the timeline, we'll probably wanna go ahead and save it just in case it crashes or something. And you can leave all the settings set to their default settings and go ahead and click generate fill layer. And so this took about an hour in real life, but it's nice to be able to speed it up and just look at it going in seconds. All right, so now that's finished. So let's take a look at how After Effects did, giving it tons of reference frames and trying to remove both of these guys. So it did a really good job. As you can see, you can you can barely even tell where they were walking. I've seen this clip like a thousand times, so I know where they're walking, but seeing it for the first time, I bet you wouldn't really even know where it is. There's one little thing I see with their shadow at one point, but it's really not a big deal. It's actually really, really close to what I wanted it to be. All right. Okay, so now our next step is to composite the guy that we want to keep into the shot. So I'm going to take the mask that I used to mask out both of them, and I'm going to delete half of the keyframes. So now those half of the keyframes are not going to show up for the rest of the timeline where the mask is being tracked. And so now I'm really just masking the right side of his body, so it's going to save me a lot of time doing it this way. So now that he's masked out for the entire timeline, I'm just gonna set his mask to be feathered about 15 pixels. That way it'll help blend between his mask and the fill layer that we created. So let's take a look at that with him composited on. All right, so this render is actually looking really good. No one's gonna notice the, a couple little pops and a couple little fade ins and fade offs. So I'd be good to keep it here. But I do want to show you how to fix it, just in case it's not as clean as with the renders that I've gotten. So let's jump into one manual correction. 
Basically, I just wanted to fix a little area up at the front and you can see that these little water pipes kind of fade and pop on and the car also starts to fade weird and becomes blurry. So what I did was I just took the reference frame that I created right at that same time and I duplicated it and I bring it, bring it. <laughs> I brought it to the top of my timeline. So when I brought that layer to the top, now what I'm gonna do is line it up just like we were doing in Photoshop earlier using the difference. And once we line that up, what we're gonna do is track the movement of the background layer. So track the movement of the actual shot and then take that reference frame and apply that tracking data to the reference frame so that moves along with the image in the exact same way. And so the way you create that tracking data is you find your original layer and you want to double click so it opens it up as a layer. Then you go over to the right where it says tracker. And if you don't have that window, you can go up to the top where it says window and click on tracker. And to start your tracking, you click on the option that says track motion. And then what you're going to want to do is find a spot in the background that isn't hindered by the people who are walking in front of it and has a good contrast that you'll be able to track. So you choose that point, move your tracker there, and then you use the analyze buttons to track forward or track backward. And then once you've got all the tracking data, you create a null layer in your timeline and apply that data to the null layer. Once you've applied it to the null layer, you parent your reference frame to the null layer. The important thing is you wanna make sure that your playhead is at the right position so that your reference frame is perfectly lined up with the background while you parent your reference frame to the null layer. And once you've done that, your reference frame will move perfectly and tracked with the background layer. And then from there, it's just a matter of fading in and fading out between multiple reference layers that you add similar to the way we did it in Photoshop. So from here, it's really up to you how much extra time you want to spend and how well After Effects did with generating the fill layer. But I added a couple more reference frames just to clean up a couple more things, and here's the final result. All right, guys, and that concludes the tutorial for today. Hope you guys learned something. Hope that was really valuable for you. I know that reference frame breakthrough was eye-opening for me, and hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you thought, and don't forget to like and subscribe. All those things really help me out with my channel, so I would really appreciate it. But yeah, thank you guys for checking in. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.